Show me the data. That's the theme of a new series of videos I'm publishing to teach you all you need to know to become an expert at using and administering the ServiceNow platform. You see, I'm convinced that the best way to learn about ServiceNow and its functionality is to start by looking at the data. It's an approach that I call data-driven analysis and learning. I was told in my very first ServiceNow training session that when you're working in ServiceNow, just about everything you see is a record in the database somewhere. And boy, have I learned that that's the truth. The database provides a perfect outline for learning all about the functionality that exists within the platform. In this video, we focus on ServiceNow's reporting capabilities. You'll learn all you need to know about creating and managing reports to pass the CSA certification examination or just become an expert at presenting data in a meaningful way. By the end of this video, you'll know all about the platform database tables that support the reporting functionality. You'll know all of the different types of reports that are available. You'll know how to create and edit reports, and you'll know how to publish and share those reports to get them in front of the people that need them. Show me the data. Reports in ServiceNow. Show me the data. <laughs> hey, ServiceNow Simpletons. My name is Jeff Teese. I've been a software developer and technical architect for over 30 years. I've experienced developing and designing in lots of different languages, and most recently, been spending all of my time working in ServiceNow. I believe that learning about IT and software development should be fun, and that we tend to overcomplicate things. The best solution is usually the simplest. That's why I created the YouTube channel ServiceNow Simple, where I've taught thousands of people all about ServiceNow with a focus on keeping things as simple as possible. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel as I'm adding new videos all the time. And now let's get to today's topic, reports in ServiceNow. To begin learning about ServiceNow's reporting capabilities, let's have a look at the underlying data model that supports the functionality. And it's really pretty simple. It all starts with a database table named SysReport, and I'll refer to that as the report table. This is a system table that's in ServiceNow's database that stores a record for each report that exists within the instance. When you create a new report or view a list of existing reports within the ServiceNow UI, you're inserting or viewing records in this table. In a second, we'll look at the fields that exist within the report table that describe each report but for now, just know that all reports are stored in the reports table. Beyond that, there are four other tables that support the functionality related to all reporting capabilities. The report source table provides the ability to store and reuse what you can think of as saved queries for retrieving data from source tables and populating a report. Each report can have one of these if desired. The scheduled email of reports table provides the ability to set up a given report to execute automatically on a recurring basis and have it emailed to interested users. A single report can be set up with zero, one, or many scheduled, scheduled emails. Reports can also be shared directly with individual users or groups of users via the report users and groups table. This allows users to access and execute reports via the UI whenever they like. That's also a one-to-many relationship. And finally, a report can be added to one or more dashboards for displaying alongside other related data. That capability is made available through a series of tables and relationships ultimately ending with the dashboard table. We'll walk through each of these tables in more detail in a few minutes, but for now, just by analyzing the underlying data model, we can see that ServiceNow provides the ability to create and manage custom reports, populate those reports via reusable stored queries, have reports emailed to users on a recurring basis, and share reports directly with users, groups of users, or via dashboards. Now let's focus our attention on the main report table. This will teach us all we need to know in order to create and manage reports in the platform. We'll start by looking at the fields that exist within the report table. When I need to do that, what I usually do is I will go to the All menu and I'll open up the Application Navigator. And anytime you want to see a listing of the records that exist within a table, you can enter the table name dot list in the Filter Navigator. In this case, the report table's table name is sys underscore report and then I'm going to enter dot list, and that will open up a list view of all of the records 
that exist within the report table. We can see here they're listed out and if we look towards the bottom, I can see that there are 652 records in this table. That means that there are 652 reports configured in this instance of ServiceNow. I can also begin to see some of the attributes that are being stored for the reports and within the report table. I can see that there's a field called title. It has the title of the report. There's a field called table, and this is uh, populated with the table that is pop that is uh, populating the data upon which the report is based. Here we can see there is a type field, so a report type, and you can begin to see some of the different types of reports that exist in ServiceNow, and we'll cover all of those in a minute. Um, and then additional fields, field name, I'll, I'll explain to you what that is here in a bit. We can see it stores who created the report when the report was updated. This is just a small set. To continue to learn more about the fields that are available within this table, we can click on the gear icon to personalize this list, in which case we get a listing of all of the fields that exist within the report table. And we can look through this list and begin to get a very good idea of the types of things that are being stored when we create reports and essentially create records in the report table. One other way I'll show you to learn more about the fields within a table is anytime you're looking at a list view of the records in a table, you can come up here to any one of the column headings and click on this context menu and scroll down and choose configure table. That will actually open a form for the specific table that we're looking at. In this case, it's the report table. And you can see here's where I got, this is where I learned that the label of the, the report table is report. The actual name in the database of the report table is sys underscore report. You can see that it extends a table application file. We don't need to worry about that at the moment. Uh, but down here, we can see a related list of all of the columns that exist within the report table. So uh, the nice thing about this list is you can sort it, you can group by, you can search for a specific table, but you can also see additional database level attributes of the field. So for example, the field type the reference, uh, if it's a reference field, what table it's referencing. This is where I got my relationships that I put in my, my data model diagram. Things like the maximum length, the default value, um, whether or not it's the default display field and things like that. So this is just another nice handy way of learning more about a table and the fields that exist within that table. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these fields uh, right now, but I am going to jump over to the PowerPoint and I'm going to show you a few of the most commonly used fields that are used uh, when you create reports. And then we will actually go into the process of learning how to create a new report. We saw in the demonstration that the report table is made up of 156 different fields that describe how the report should behave. Now, I want to step through eight of the most commonly used fields and then show you how to create a new report and populate these fields. First, we have the SysID field. Every table in ServiceNow has this field, and you can think of it as the system-generated unique ID of any record. It's the table's primary key, and in this case, it represents the unique ID of a given report. The title field is a string field that stores the report title, and you'll see the report title throughout the UI whenever you're viewing a list of reports. It's usually included on the output of the report itself. The source type field is a bit interesting. It's a string field with valid values of table or data source. And this field tells the platform where to go for the data. I've already mentioned that reports can be populated from report source records that are like saved queries. To use one of those, the source type field gets populated with the data source value. Otherwise, and in most cases, the source type will be set to table which means that the table and any filters used to populate the report are just stored as part of the report record itself. The report source field is the counterpart to the source type field. When the source type is set to data source, this is the field that specifies which data source record to use. Otherwise, and in most cases, this field's left blank. The table field stores the primary database table from which the report data is pulled and the field name field stores the field within that table, table that the data should be grouped on. And you'll see in our next demonstration why most reports include a field that is used for grouping the data for presentation purposes. 
The filter field is a special string type field that tells the platform about any filtering conditions to apply to narrow down the data being included in the report. And finally, there's the type field, and that specifies which type of report or visualization the platform should use when presenting the report data. And to explain that, I'll show you this. Nice diagram that lists the different types of reports available in ServiceNow and when each is ideal for use. ServiceNow provides over 23 different types of reports or visualizations out of box. They include lists, box, bar, pivots, trends, line, control, spline, area, histogram, heat map, maps, calendars, bubble, funnel, pyramid, donuts, pie, speedometer, dial, and single score. Each of these might be useful depending upon your scenario, and I'll include a link in the description box of the video to this diagram that can help you explore and determine which report type might be best for your situation. Now let's walk through the process of creating a new report. And remember, all we're really doing here is inserting a new record into the report table that we just talked about. We have three options available for creating our new report. We can use the Reports Applications Create New module, we can use ServiceNow Studio, or we can create a new report from an existing list view, and I'll demonstrate each. But let's start by opening the Application Navigator and accessing the Reports Applications Create New module. And now we simply start populating the fields, which at this point should begin to look familiar. We'll set the report name, and that's really the title field. And I'll use Users by Department for the title of this report. Here's that Source Type field we spoke about. I'm going to just leave that as Table. I'm not going to use a stored query. And then populate the Table field with the database table that we want to create our report against. I'm going to use the User table. That's sys underscore user is the actual name for this example. Now I can click Next to traverse through each of these tabs up here. Or you can also bounce around if you want, but I'll just go in order. On the Type tab, you can see each of the different visualization types. So essentially here, we're just setting that type field. And I'm going to choose the pie chart for this. Now when I click Next, the tool will pre-populate a visualization of the report looks pretty plain now because it's just all users and it takes me to the configure tab where I can choose my group by field and several other options you can see here for this report I'm going to group by the department field clicking next refreshes the report and also allows me to set some additional style related properties you can see those here and there are several of them Remember those 156 fields that exist in the report table? You can begin to see how those fields begin to stack up with all of the different options that are available for each of the different report types. I feel good about this report, so I'm going to click Save, and that's it. We've just inserted a new report record in the report table, essentially creating a new report in ServiceNow. So let me show you real quickly these other two options for creating reports. And they're really pretty much the same thing, just different methods of getting there. If you want to use ServiceNow Studio, you go to the App Navigator and open up the Studio application. It's System Applications Studio. And Studio opens in a new tab. And when you use Studio, you have to work within an application scope. So you select the application the report will be a part of. Once you're there, you go to File, Create File, choose the Reporting section, the Report option, and then click Create. And from here, the tool works exactly the same way. It's just a different way of getting there. And finally, the third method of creating a report is to start from the data that will source the report. This is pretty cool. For example, I can view the records in the user table by entering sysuser.list. I can then click the column context menu 
For the field, I want the report grouped by. It's department in this case. And then I can select the bar or pie chart menu item and voila, same place. But this time, the fields for the name, the source type, the table, and the group by are already populated. And you can tweak or change anything from here. Now that we know about reports and how they get created and managed, let's quickly cover the remainder of the data model and the related functionality. And the rest of this is really all about getting the reports in front of the eyeballs that need to see them. Let's talk about scheduling first. And what that really means is setting up a report to automatically execute and get emailed to an audience on some recurring basis. The scheduled email of reports table that's sys auto underscore report is the table that makes that possible. This table stores a record for every scheduled email report and includes all of the fields that we need to know which report, when to execute it, and who to send it to. It has its sys ID field or unique identifier. And the report field that stores a reference to the sys ID of the report that's being scheduled. The users field is a special list type field that enables a one-to-many relationship between the scheduled report and one or more users to whom the report should be emailed. It uses a reference to the sys ID of the user record in the sys user table. And the groups field does the same thing as the user field except it stores references to one or more group records. The email addresses field allows for sending the report to people that might not be users of the platform. So you can just think of this as like a list of manually entered email addresses. The run field stores a string value indicating the recurrence rate upon which the report should be executed. And emailed, you can think daily, weekly, monthly here, or on demand, however you need it. The time field tells the report the time at which the scheduled report should be executed. The subject field stores the subject of the email, and the introductory message field stores the actual content body of the email. And then two more, there's a condition field that allows for writing a script that sets a condition that must be met in order for the scheduled email to execute. And then finally, there's a type field that specifies the type of the attachment that should be used for the report, whether it's PDF, Excel, or some image type. Now let's go ahead and schedule our report for email and remember all we're really doing here is inserting a record into the sys auto report table. And as always we have a few options for doing this. One way is to just open the report that we want to schedule and do it from there. To do that we go to the reports application view run module and that opens a list of all of the reports that we have access to. You can see that there's some filters here at the top to display reports created by you, reports that have been shared with you, reports that have been shared globally, or just all of the reports you have access to. And I'm going to search for the report title, and that was Users by Department, and select the report we created to open it. And here's our report. This is also where you would come to make changes to a report if you needed to do that or if you just wanted to run the report on demand. Um, to schedule the report, we'll click on the sharing icon in the header bar here and we'll select schedule. Now we just populate the fields. Remember we're inserting that record. We're going to just populate the fields using the UI. You can name the scheduled job whatever you like. You can see that the report field is already populated. I'll populate the users field with a couple of users. And I'm going to choose Abraham Lincoln and Fred Luddy. And I'll also populate the group field. Let's say the cab approval group so that all of the users that are a member of that group get the emailed report as well. And I'll include my personal email. I'm going to set the emailed report to execute monthly, let's say on the first day of each month, and we'll leave it just at midnight. I'm not going to add a condition, but you could do that here by, by, by selecting this checkbox and then typing in a script that sets some condition that must be met. I won't do that for this one. 
I'll populate the subject of the email and the email body. I'm going to leave the attachment type as PDF landscape and click submit. And that is it. We've scheduled our report for email, essentially inserted a new record into the Sys Auto Report table. And real quickly, let me show you one other way to schedule a report, and that is via the Reports Applications Schedule Reports module. If you click that, that will open up a list of all of the reports that are currently scheduled. We can see that there's only one for this instance, and that's the one that we just scheduled. And from here, if you needed to, you could go into that scheduled report. You could make changes to it. You could delete it if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to, to schedule a report from here, you can just click the New button uh, to schedule another report. Another thing we can do to make our report available to others is share it. This gives other users of the platform the ability to open the report and execute it on demand whenever they want. The Report Users and Groups table, or sys underscore report underscore users underscore groups, is the table that makes that possible. This table stores a record for each individual user or group that the report is shared with. The table has fields to store the report being shared and the user or group to whom the report is being shared. And to make this happen via the UI, we can simply open the report like we did for scheduling. Click the sharing icon again, but this time select share. And here you can see we have options to share the report globally or globally by role, or we can select individual users or groups. The last thing I'll cover in this video on ServiceNow reports is how to add a report to a dashboard. Dashboards in ServiceNow enable you to display multiple performance analytics, reporting, and other widgets on a single screen. The data model that supports dashboards is fairly extensive due to the fact that they can have multiple groups and tabs and sections and modules. I'll do a separate video covering that, but for now, just know that when you add a report to a dashboard, you're essentially creating a series of records in related tables ultimately ending with the dashboard, PA underscore dashboard table. You can add a report to a dashboard a couple of different ways. One way is to start at the dashboard and then add the report from there. The other way, which I'll demonstrate here, is to open the report like we've done and click the sharing icon and select Add to Dashboard. From there, it's simple. You just select the dashboard that you want and the dashboard tab where you want the report displayed, click Add, and you've got it. Your report will now be displayed as part of that dashboard. And that does it for this video on reports in ServiceNow. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, we'd love a thumbs up. Love it even more if you'd subscribe to the channel and provide feedback in the comments. Keep your eye out for the next video, and I'll see you in the next one.